Welcome to Peter and Ruffy's Football Show, sponsored by Arnold Clark. It's Friday the 23rd of October. I'm Peter Martin. Alan Ruff is alongside me, Tam McManus and Charlie Adam as well. We will look back over the European adventures for Scottish clubs and British clubs in the Europa League. We've got lots to talk about, including an absolute screamer from Kemar Roof. Uh, that will dominate our thoughts as well as the weekend Scottish Premiership football, uh, the games that get the go-ahead. Um, but first and foremost, I think we're going to start on a, a sad note and uh, it is of course the news that's come out today of the passing of Eb Skovdal uh, the former Aberdeen manager he uh, started as Aberdeen manager in 1999 but uh, I think his most successful period three periods at Bromby where he is quite simply a managerial legend but uh, a tremendous sadness uh, Ruffy Ebby uh, was a uh, for me a, a chain smoking uh, guy with a, a good sense of humour and of course he had uh, a couple of runners-up spots in the cup competitions for Aberdeen and uh, a best place in the Premiership of fourth. Yeah, I think he was well liked with the supporters uh, of Aberdeen. He, he was again what I would call a, a fans manager. He liked to get involved with the uh, the fans and everything. And you're right, he had a bit uh, sense of humour. Uh, I don't know if you remember the. I think it was a story Willie Young told us when they were getting beat three nothing. Uh, the Rangers and about three minutes to go he called Willie Young over and Willie was wondering what was the matter and, and he says to Willie I'm going to make three substitutions which of my three players do you think I should take off which I thought was quite <laughs> funny so with that kind of sense of humour that's good enough for me <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, of course, <laughs> the Aberdeen fans, and rightly so, you, you you get to that point where everybody is Sir Alex Ferguson, then everybody below that is is different levels of the benchmark, Tom. But I think reading a lot of the social media today, a lot of Aberdeen fans look back on his time with great fondness. Yeah, I, I actually played against Evie's Aberdeen team. I think he was a manager of the early 2000s. And... Uh, Listen, it wasn't the best Aberdeen side that's ever been. Uh, I think they were quite poor at the time, but I don't think that was a lot of that was down to him. I just think they'd, they'd a lot of poor players going through a period of transition at that point, and I can remember we gave him a couple of downs at Hibs. But um, no, listen, it's, it's it's a real shame. You know, he's a real character in Scottish football. He's come out with some memorable quotes. He was great with the media. The media loved him, and uh, I think the Aberdeen fans still hold him in high regard. Listen, it wasn't a great time for the club, but he tried his best and as you said, he went on elsewhere and proved that he was a good manager. It just didn't maybe quite work out for him at Aberdeen, but no, it's, it was sad to hear that this morning. Yeah, absolutely. Hi to Lindsay Buchanan, Aldo Donnelly, Andy Dunnicky, uh, Reg Tate as well, Andrew Davison joins us, Niall, Ronnie Chapman, Scott Graham, uh, Darren Fields, Gordon McFadge and Eddie Thompson there as well, uh, Joseph McGonigal, Nicky Twig, good to see you back there, Nicky, I haven't noticed your name in a long time, Fiona Doherty, who's a Rangers fan, who's absolutely buzzing at the moment and why not, because we're going to talk about it, because if you are uh, watching us on our Facebook, don't forget to like, share and follow and you can subscribe to our YouTube channel but more importantly get your thinking cap on and see if you can come up with a goal that you've witnessed live that you've been in a game and it was an absolute screamer of a goal that you'll never forget think about it you guys have got to get your thinking caps on because you've got to come up with a goal that maybe you witnessed yourself Charlie we're going to talk about the one that you scored because suddenly Kemar Roof is in the halfway line club, Charlie. And uh, what an illustrious band of players they are. Uh, there's not many of us that um, managed to join that club. Me, me Beckham, Rooney, Kamar Roof. So it's, uh, it's nice to, be, to welcome somebody else in there. But no, what a strike it was, especially on that pitch. You know, I've seen, you know, the, you know to hold off. Well, he was on the 15 yards from the Rangers box to do what he'd done and then to have the... You know, the, the audacity to try it from where he was was phenomenal. What a strike, you know, the everything that comes with it, um, he deserves it because it's a, it's a phenomenal strike. And I think the manager uh, sort of overreacted a little bit by saying it's the best goal he's ever seen. But um, I'm sure, the, the, you know, the lads would have been buzzing for him after that. Yeah, absolutely. And of course, some people like to celebrate that goal in different ways. Rangers fans would have been cheering in the house. And if you are listening to our podcast, you'll know that Ruffy celebrates it by having a quick swig of his gin and fresh orange there while nobody's <laughs> looking. As soon as, as soon as the camera goes on to Charlie full screen, Ruffy thinks, I'll do this and nobody will hear me as the ice chinks and I have a gin. So there you are. Uh, everybody, Everybody's on it. They know it's coming. Um, lots of people celebrating uh, that goal. And, and 
and rightly so. It was an absolute screamer. Interestingly enough, have a think about it. See if you can come up with a goal. I, I've got a couple to start you all off that I was thinking about uh, in the mix of it, uh, of goals that I've seen. Ruffy, you and I were there in the party of Prance. McFadden's goal's up there. John Hartson's goal for Celtic against Liverpool in the UEFA uh, Cup at the time was an absolute screamer. And another one that I remember, Tam, which probably... You, I, not sure you were born, Tam, but in the Driver Cup final, Davy Cooper scored an absolute yeah, I've seen it. peach yeah, of a I've goal. Seen it on YouTube. He flicked it up over three Celtic players' heads, took it on his chest, and side footed it into the back of the net, which was an absolute wonder goal. So there's been a fair few, Tam. Have you got one in mind? Oh, the ones that I've, I've played in. Probably the one that I've played in uh, and witnessed live is Lubo Moravchik uh, for Celtic against Hibs. I don't know if you remember that one. I think you were commentating on it, actually. He, it was a short free kick, and uh, Lubo hit it from about 35 yards, and I've never seen a ball going in as fast as this in my life. It went into the top, right into the top corner, and uh, a phenomenal strike. And Alan McLeish gave me <laughs> belters at half-time for not closing them down, even though I was about 25 yards away from him. Uh, but <laughs> that's probably the best goal I've seen uh, on, the, on the same pitch as someone, or live. It uh, was Maravchik for Celtic against Hibs. Yeah, OK. Um, we're going to take uh, more of your memories on that. I'll get Ruffy thinking as well. Uh, let's get to the meat and bones of the Europa League. A, a great result for Rangers. It was a great goal. Um, but again, Tavernier, nine goals. Penalty kicks, he looks <laughs> assured. I can think of some great penalty kick takers down through the years. Charlie, Phil Neal at Liverpool, Ray Stewart, who was a Dundee United player, but he scored goals for fun uh, for West Ham like from the see penalty it. spot. Uh, Matt Letissi only missed one uh, penalty in his life and I think that was against Mark Crossley of Nottingham Forest, Charlie. Um, but, um, you know, to get a guy who can score from the penalty spot, he's good at a free kick as well. Tavernier, I think, has really cemented his place as a, a real fan's favourite with the Rangers supporters. Yeah, because there was doubts at some point when he was um, in the last period that was he good enough for Rangers? And, you know, could he really do it? But consistently, you know, played 250 odd games for Rangers so far. Never injured, really. Um, and the goals and the, the, the assists he has is phenomenal for a right back. And, you know, fair play to him. He's, he's, his game's come to another level. And, um, you know, he's a mainstay in that Rangers team. You know, I think the manager, you know, can rely on him. That's why he gave him the arm. I kept him with the armband. He knew that what he was getting. And, Day in, day out, he sets the standard for Rangers and, um, you know, long may that continue because, you know, when you've got a full-back that's scoring goals and, you know, not just your strikers, then, it, you know, it definitely helps you win football matches. And Charlie, on a positive note, Kmar Roof's goal, he did mean it. You could see him having a wee look up. Yeah, he, listen, he meant it. It was a um, phenomenal strike and, you know, he's played in that league before so he knew what he was playing against and maybe... He's he's looked over old videos, or you know, like I I used to do was with the goalie coach at, at Stoke. He used to um, you know come to me on a Friday and say, "Listen, the goalie might might be um, off his line up quite, but have a look at it, and if you fancy it, have a go." Do you know what I mean? And that was the sort of thing, and that was the only reason I knew that Courtois would be off his line is because that we'd done a bit of homework on him and knew I'd watched him a few times at Chelsea because they'd had a lot of possession. They were always high up the pitch, and he was you know patrolling his goal his penalty area. And um, listen, I had a go, and unfortunately for me, it went in. But um, it's you know the other ones like your Rooney's and your Beckham's and all that. You know their instinct, and um, it's it's great. It's, it's just unbelievable to see, and what a finish it was from Roof. Peter, yeah, absolutely Peter. superb. Yeah, uh, I think Roof's goal was was unbelievable. One of the best goals I've ever seen. But I think it just took the shine off it that the fact that the goalkeeper had cramp. So I think if a fully fit goalkeeper might have got to it. <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah, I know, uh, I know, I know that annoyed you. That I know exactly. That's what goalkeepers do, though, Tom. They try and make out as if there was something. Yeah, as if there was something was wrong brilliant. with them, you know. When really it was the genius of Roof. Yeah, I mean, listen, if he dines out on that forever and a day, um, I don't think anyone would begrudge him it because it's a sensational strike. And I think uh, Stephen Gerrard, um, no surprise, has scored a few in his time and witnessed a few. And he was also singing the praises of Kemar Roof. If you go back from the, the, the strike and the execution, it's where he's collected the ball. It's him holding two real strong challenges off. Then he goes past the third. Um, defender if you like and then to have the vision the audacity and then execute it for me it's probably the best that I've seen live well, obviously it was a good result for us um, 
But again, it was only the first night in a, in a big competition for us. So, of course, we started in a, in a strong way. Um, away from home, two, two goals and a clean sheet. You couldn't get any better than that. So, But it's early doors. It's early doors. We need to back up, uh, back it up next week against Poznan and then the following week against Benfica. So, of course, we started well. But um, as I said before, we're always striving for more. So next week's a big test for us again. Yeah, absolutely. Keeping his uh, feet firmly on the ground, Scott Arfield. But uh, I think, you know, for Stephen Gerrard to say uh, that it was uh, the best goal he'd seen live, and, and just in case you've picked it up wrong, if you are actually talking about uh, some goals, uh, then don't forget, you have to have actually been in the stadium to see it if you're going to post something. I know a, a number of you are posting Marco van Basten's goal for uh, Holland against <laughs> Russia, but unless Scotland somehow managed to get <laughs> fi 550 spare tickets for that match in 1988 then I don't think any of you were there. Uh, I'm talking about games that you were actually there, you watched it or in the case of Ruffy, Tam and Charlie you actually played in a game where there was a wonder goal scored that you will never forget. Um, I can only look at it and, and talk about the goals uh, that I was either there um, or indeed commentating on as well and there's been, a, there's been a fair few so if you were at them then we'll try and read out as many as possible uh, there was a little, because we're getting so many comments in, I think I Ali mentioned it was her husband's uh, birthday today. Happy birthday. I can't remember his name because, quite simply, I'm trying to read as many of these messages we're getting as is humanly possible uh, on the show today. But nevertheless, as Scott Arfield mentioned there, Ruffy, good start for Rangers. Great week for Rangers. <laughs> They're absolutely buzzing. Uh, and why wouldn't you be? You're just beating your, your biggest rivals and you're getting into a game. You know, that uh, you're playing well in Europe uh, for the last couple of years. You're getting results. So a lot of confidence in the Rangers camp just now. And, and why not? You know, I know a lot of people were saying, oh, they were five players down. But you've still got to go and beat them. And I said to you yesterday, I think we talk up the teams far too much. I mean, I think we were talking about this team had they been beaten for six years at home. That goes out the window in, in, in certain games. And certainly, didn't he? bother Rangers with that start anyway because they went out and did what they had to do yeah, um, let's have a look at that table to see where Rangers are placed in the Europa League and it's certainly uh, a good start for them, just nicely tucked in behind Benfica, like Poznan and Standard Liège still to get off the mark but uh, uh, they're coming up against Livingston uh, at the weekend and they'll want to continue the momentum the feel-good factor, everything's buzzing and of course Charlie, that's when you actually want to play, you're buzzing, you want to be part of it, you want to get in the team and, and I think Barisic with a slight injury, but other than that, looks as if he's got a right good squad squad to pick from this week again. Yeah, he has. We, we said it on uh, Wednesday, didn't we, that they might make one or two changes, and he done that. He left out your Davis and people that are experienced players that you know probably didn't need the game, and you know the other lads come in and done a job, and you know they look forward to this Livingston game, and now it's about you know Celtic away, Aberdeen, a tough away match, but Rangers have to. To, to then stamp their authority against Livingston and hopefully they get the right result and, and it'll, it'll give them more confidence going into the, the, the later games in the next couple of, couple of weeks. Yeah, two wins uh, and, of course, uh, three defeats in the last five games for uh, Livingston. They're sitting currently eighth in the table. Now, because, obviously, Tam and Ruffy have been super, what I call super wide, Charlie, the, the two of them know it's a Friday. The two of them are well aware that they have to post the predictions. But what they do, because Tam is what I call the young version of Ruffy, he doesn't want to come for his microphone cable. What, what a compliment. He doesn't want... He do he doesn't want to do anything unless you spoon feed him. Tam will replace Ruffy eventually as the man who loves to be spoon fed on everything. So the two of them have not posted their predictions, Charlie. So we're going to have to take them off uh, all, off today. The exact score lines as well. So Rangers against Livingston. Tam, what's the score going to be? Hey, I'm going to go for 3-0 to Rangers. Easy. Not a problem. 3-0. Charlie. Yeah, I'm the same. 3-0, comfortable, and um, look forward to the next game, and hopefully, you know, put a bit of pressure on Celtic. Ruffy? Yeah, well, since Tams went for 3-0, I'm going to go for 4-0. Who's going to do that? Okay. Uh, well, <laughs> why, why are you going this, to him last? <laughs> Well, the, the, don't I'll worry, I'll go to him first in the next one. This whole cheat. spread betting is a nightmare. I'll go 2-0, Rangers. 
Um, so <laughs> Charlie, they're trying desperately to overhaul me. Shut up, so we're just like ganging up on you now, mate. Aye. One of us is going to catch you. Shane <laughs> says, 49 years ago today, 49 years ago today, Ruffy, Alec Ray lifted the League Cup with a 4-1 win against Celtic. Did you know it was 49 years ago today? Yes, uh, obviously I've been getting lots of uh, emails and everything to remember us of, of that day. Uh, yes, I did. Uh, 23rd of October, uh, 3 o'clock. It was a Saturday, obviously, uh, not a Friday. But uh, a wonderful day for everybody concerned at the club. And I think a lot of the older uh, supporters are remembering it today as we speak. But yeah, uh, next, year is, game, next year is obviously the 50th anniversary. So I think that will be no, a, a celebration. Yeah, yes. Is, is, ne is next year the 50th? Well, for when we count... <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it is, yeah, 71. <laughs> yeah, 51, yeah, it's 50, yeah, that's right, fine. Yeah, yeah, that's, yeah. that's incredible, isn't it? Um, and who'd have thought, especially with 49 years today. Um, the other thing I was going to say to you, Ruffy, um, apart from the, the emotion um, of the day and the memories that come flooding back to you, just briefly, uh, some players, and, and certainly David McParland sadly won't, um, is not with us, so that's, that's a huge blow when you always want to get everybody back together. But will the boys get together for... God willing, COVID gone, uh, a celebration for the 50th? Yeah, I think it will be. I think there's a few things planned. Obviously, it doesn't come around that often. Uh, fortunately for us, uh, most of the lads are still with us. Uh, unfortunately, for the Celtic uh, team, a lot of them aren't uh, with us, which is really unfortunate. Great bunch of guys. Uh, it's one of my lasting memories of that game was after we won, every Celtic player to a man went round every Thistle player they congratulate them on the park, which uh, is something that you always remember when you're a young lad getting to a final. But uh, no, I think there'll be a, a game probably planned. There'll be obviously a dinner and everything else that goes along with it. And uh, it's uh, it's only happened twice in our uh, history, 21 and 51. So hopefully next year might be a, another cup win. Yeah. But will there be link for speakers, too. Peter? <laughs> yeah, well, to, you know, uh, well, to be to, to be to be perfectly honest with you, Tom, I, I've forgotten all about what dinners are. I don't think any, I, I don't think any, I, I've spoken to Tom Cowan. He's forgotten all about it. I was going to give a mention there to Dan Jimmy, who um, is a Hibs fan. He says uh, uh, Ulysses De La Cruz goal for Hibs against Hearts mm. at Easter Road. So, Dan, I can only presume you were there. Yeah, I played at that. that I forgot game. about that. Um, did you play in that game? Yeah. Yeah, I did. And I, Ulysses De La Cruz had the worst left foot. He could not hit the ball with his left foot. And he put one in the top corner for about 25 yards. And I was stunned. I was stunned at each to go. It was unbelievable. He couldn't yeah. hit the ball with his left foot. Okay, um, we'll mention more, mention more of those goals as we go along. Uh, we'll try and read out as many of your points of view as we possibly can. Um, remember, it's a football show. We like talking about your team. If you want to put a point across, by all means do so. Try and keep it um, with uh, an air of decency about it. It is, after all, only football. Um, from Rangers and their win to Celtic Park. I watched that game last night. I was there in the press box. Uh, it was, uh, again, a similar story from the first half. Uh, three 3-5-2 uh, wasn't working, uh, didn't work. Um, I think the three in the back line, I'm going to exclude Welsh from this because I think he's uh, one of those young boys who's just learning his trade. But Duffy looks a bomb scare at the moment and Ayer, I thought, played OK. But the back line, again, same problems, Ruffy. Cross ball, goal, one behind. Yeah, yeah I said yesterday to... Good teams who play a back three have good back three players. Uh, they were a fish out of water. I don't think for a minute Shane Duffy likes to get dragged all over the back. You know whether it's he's got a great right to cover, left to cover. It's it's affecting him. Uh, I think he just wants to win headers, make tackles, and in a three, well the three that Celtic are playing, he's not been allowed to do that. He's getting caught out for pace, he's getting caught out of being out of position. So going back to a four, uh, I think, is the, the right way. It's going back to a four against good sides, and I mean Rangers, I mean teams in Europe, I don't think they'll get away with it. Going, going a three at the back in our league against the others, they'll get away with it, but not with the quality that Rangers and European sides have got. You, you just have to have quality players to play that formation. 
Yeah. Um, Davey Watkins says, this is the Old Firm Chat Show. Davey, if you've uh, watched this show in any capacity, you'll know uh, that we deal with the news as it happens from last night's Europa League, then on to the league, and we talk about every team. So um, it, it, your team's coming. Jack Ross is actually on the show, Davey. So um, as ever, we advise you that uh, every team is covered and catered for from the Premiership to Especially European football, which happened... Well, which happened last night, especially the Hibs, Davy, because obviously Stoke the ball there uh, works for Hibs TV and, of course, any other TV that's going. I mean, uh, I think I've spotted them on Israeli TV as a specialist on that as well. He'll do, he'll do the lot. Um, three one in the end. Big Zlatan, Big Zlatan could have played for Big Zlatan could have played for Dundee last week. Charlie, his movement wasn't great. He, he just sauntered about, and made the odd touch here and here and there. He was, uh, he was just a, he was. Just just, I think they have just to, to show his face, really. He didn't need to do anything because the supporting cast were, were more than enough of a match for Celtic. It was a difficult 45 for Celtic first half. They just didn't get to grips with it. And um, second half was much better. Obviously, when you get the goal, they get a lift. And then they're chasing the game a little bit near the end and they lose the third goal. But I, I think second half, you've got to take positives out of it. And hopefully, you know, let's like say they've got a big game on Sunday against Hib uh, Aberdeen away. And, um, you know, it'll be a different type of game where they have to go and roll the sleeves up and try and, you know, prove the doubt was wrong again. Yeah, I mean, on that point, I mean, I, I must admit, Ralph, you're in the goalkeepers' union. I'm sorry, but I, I, I have my doubts about Barkas. He hasn't made a save of note at the moment. Um, and I wonder if it was a, a wise move <coughs> not giving Craig Gordon a deal. Yeah, at this moment in time, it looks a case, uh, I think. Charlie, I'll, I'll, I'll know better than us. It is a, it's a different. I don't care who you're playing for, but to come into a Celtic team or a Rangers team, you have to adapt to the atmosphere. I know there's no fans in the dressing room or anything like that, but you've still got to adapt to the pressures that go with playing with Rangers and Celtic. I, I don't think he's managed that yet. Uh, I don't think the, the front three, the three in front of him are helping him at all. But you're right, you know, he can make saves, there's no doubt about that. He did that at Ross County. But when you go to Rangers and Celtic, as Alan McGregor will show you, you have to make this save. You know, you have to make this save that turns a game, this save you know, that wins you a game, you know, stops you from getting beat. Craig Gordon did it, you know, in big games. Arthur did it in big games. You know, he hasn't done it yet in a big game. He hasn't won a game for Celtic. And that's what everybody will be judging him on. I'm not saying he's not a bad goalkeeper. He must be a bad goalkeeper. He must be a good goalkeeper if he's in the national side. So give him the benefit of the doubt. Maybe he just hasn't been able to bed in yet, coming from a foreign country. But he'll certainly have to do better because there are a few doubters out there now and you don't want that going into any big games, particularly at the weekend against Aberdeen. So the Aberdeen game might be the game where he makes the big save that wins the game that everybody buys into him. I really hope he does, because we don't like to see players going through that kind of thing. Yeah, well, he's a reserve goalkeeper for the national side, Rafi, and Ross County was months ago. Months ago. So Yeah, um, but he made uh, the happy, saves in that happy, game. Uh, Rafi. He's not made Ruffy, a save since. He hasn't made a save since. Well, that's game. the point I'm making. He, has, he hasn't made the save yet that's bought everybody over. But the time will come. Yeah. Yeah. Usually when I you start bashing more. somebody, they come good. I think it needs one. Oh, well, then I'm, I've been with you nine years. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Ross, County, Ross County will come good this season. <laughs> I've been back to him for nine years, Charlie. Uh, anyway, apart from anything else, uh, I'm sure you'll agree, Ruffy's part of the goalkeepers' union there. They tend to all stick together. Do you agree with him? Do you think Barkas is the real deal? Has he still to prove it for you? The jury's out. I think it was a mistake letting Craig Gordon go. Give us your thoughts on that. Here's how Neil Lennon and Callum McGregor um, viewed last night's defeat. Well, I mean, they just have to, you know, ignore it. That's what it is. It's hysteria. You know, we've played two really good teams the last couple of days and, we've, you know, lost both of the games. But, um, you know, we, we know we, we will get better and we will play better as we go along. You know, I think we just now need to kick on. We've had the two kicks in the teeth and now we have to really go and show everyone that we're we're together as a group and, you know, we mean business again. Listen, I need a performance and a win. You know, and that's every week. Week in, week out, same as last season, same as when I came in. You know, we're making too much of one result, one performance. We will, you know, come back stronger than ever. <coughs> 
Well, I, I think he's right in one thing. There is a certain amount of hysteria surrounding Celtic over uh, over one game, not two games, because I don't think anyone uh, thought they were going to defeat AC Milan uh, last night, unless you're about to tell me differently. But I am going to... I am going to not offer you an apology, Ruffy, but offer uh, what I think is an agreement with you because you mentioned something last week about Scott Brown. I didn't think Scott Brown was the main culprit in anything to do with uh, the old firm defeat. I thought it was more about what Rangers did really well. Um, and there was a few players that were poor before you could nail Scott Brown. But last night I actually thought about you when they substituted him because I think the manager will do that on a regular basis, Ruffy, because... He, he, he played a 4-4-2 or a 4-3-2-1 um, in the second half of the game, went to a flat back four, and then he changed the middle of the park, took Scott Brown off, and and they started to play with a, a, a kind of a, there was a quicker a vibrancy about them, Ruffy. Now, this is not a go at Scott Brown. All I would say about Scott Brown is the only crime he's committing at the moment is he's getting older. Yeah, I said that at the beginning of the season. Uh, oh, year on year, he's been absolutely incredible. Uh, and absolutely incredible in club football, European football. You know, a time comes when obviously you're, you're going to be off the pace just a wee bit. Not much, you know, but uh, like everybody else, sometimes your your form drops a wee bit. But I, I think now good managers are looking at the Celtic team and they're saying, right, Scott Brown in the middle. If we let him play, he's going to dominate. He's going to get in everybody's faces, blah, blah, blah. He's going to be tackling. He's going to be putting our best players out of the game. I, I think good teams now are playing to their strength, which means they play around about Scott Brown. They, they take Scott Brown out of the equation, and you see the good quality players with pace round about them. They play passes round about them. Now, it's difficult for them <coughs> to get into the game unless he's got possession of the ball. When he's not got possession of the ball, Everything seems to be flying by him just now. And it might be the case. You just leave him out for a, a day, uh, a week or whatever, you know, and, and, and give him a break because the, the amount of stuff he's put in in the last couple, two or three, four or five years has been absolutely incredible. So he's no different to any other footballer. No, absolutely not. But I think what he will do, Tom, and, and Charlie, I'll get your thoughts on this as well, because it was it will be something, and I'm not having a go at you, Charlie, it will be something that will come to you in the next couple of years as well. But Tom, maybe the manager will use him more sparingly. Yeah, yeah, I think he will. Listen, Scott Brown's been a, a magnificent <coughs> servant for Celtic. I think he's still got life in him. I don't think he's, he's done by any means. But he can't play every game. He can't play 90 minutes every week, especially just now where the, the, the fixtures are coming thick and fast. So I think you've got to be, be, be careful and be clever with Scott and, and play him in some games and leave him out in other games. But you've got to look at the opposition as well. You know, if it's uh, if there's, there's time in the ball for Scott Brown to go and dictate the game, then you would play him. Um, so, um, as I said, everybody gets older. You know, I had it myself. You know, that you're coming to the end of your career. You're, you're Obviously, you're slowing down. Um, but... I don't think he's uh, he's certainly not finished. I think he's still got a big part to play at Celtic on and off the pitch. Um, but there's plenty of competition in there now, you know. And you've got young David Turnbull, who I really like, and you know I'd like to see him get some opportunities as well. Um, he come into the team and, and, and show what he can do because he can bring a a vibrancy and an energy into the middle of the park for Celtic as well. So um, they've got plenty of options. But I don't think Scott can play at his age. You know, he can play every single game and every ninety minutes. I, I don't think that's possible. Yeah, what was 26 like, Tom, when you, you realised your career was coming to an end? <laughs> I think it was earlier than that, 24. <laughs> uh, yeah. uh, Charlie, um, the head tells you you can do things, I personally think, because of uh, your left peg. Uh, I personally think you could uh, you can still execute the goal that Kemar Roof scored from time to time. But do you get to that point where sometimes you think, uh, and I'm not talking about this season, I'm talking about as you get older in life, do you think, I could do that 10 years ago, but I, I can't do it now, I changed my game? Yeah, you've got to adapt in your game. and Listen, it comes to everybody, um, but it's how you, you know, Scott Brown's been a fantastic servant for, for Celtic, and I think that it's easy to pick that that one because of how he plays. He's sitting in the back four and, and he dictates play, and when Celtic don't play well, it's... You know, either he doesn't get enough of the ball or, you know, he's he's not instrumental in how Celtic are playing. So he'll get criticised for that. But listen, he's a he's been a fantastic player and still is. We'll give a lot to Celtic. I still believe that he, he can he 
he won't get left out. I still think he'll be a mainstay in the team. I just think at times when they get opportunities to take him off, they'll take him off more now than they, than they ever have. And um, it's, you know, who's going to replace him? In Cam, is he good enough to, to be disciplined enough to sit in there and play? I don't think so. I think Scott Brown's the perfect one at the moment for Celtic to sit in there and take the game. And um, we'll see, see how it goes. But he'll be disappointed about coming off last week. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, they're up at Aberdeen, uh, Petaudry, uh, Hayes, Taylor, Edmondson, uh, I think, and um, there's another one that's uh, a doubt. Taylor, uh, McCrory um, is a doubt for um, Aberdeen as well. Um, so this is a, it's still a test, despite the fact that they've got injury worries, Aberdeen. <clears throat> how, do you, how do you see this one going, Tam? I think it's a really difficult game for Celtic. I think it's a must-win game. You know, I, I don't think that we spoke about it at the start of the season, Peter, and I don't think Neil Lennon or Steven Gerrard, either of them, could afford to go six, eight, eight points behind. I just don't think you can allow that sort of gap this season. And uh, if Celtic don't go up there and, and pick up the full three points, you've got an opportunity for Rangers playing just behind them to go and stretch that again. Plus, the week after, Celtic are playing in the semi final and Rangers are at Kilmarnock. So, listen, it's a huge game for Celtic. It's a massive game. They've got to go up there and win. Whether it's 1-0, a gritty performance, whether it's 3 or 4-0, doesn't matter. You've got to go up there and win the game. And I think Aberdeen will be very, very difficult to beat. Um, I know they never turned up early in the season against Rangers, the first game, but I think they've got a lot better since then. They're hard to break down and uh, they've got a goal threat at the other end. So, difficult game for Celtic. But yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and uh, I have to say... <laughs> I have to say, Rocky, even, <laughs> even, even as I, even as iPad says, no, no, calm your jets. It's not, a, it's not a must-win game. I'm not having it. The iPad went off the air, Ruffy. Um, so, so when the iPad knows its stuff, Ruffy, that's when we know we're doing well. Um, Ruffy, oh, I, 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 I think, I think there is a bit of hysteria surrounding uh, Neil Lennon. I. I don't believe it's a must-win game. I think Neil Lennon mentioned last night that when he gets the players that he believes are his first-team players back, um, they'll be back on track. And, and I think that will happen at Petaudry. I think it'll be slender, but I'm going yeah. for 2-1, Ruffy. What are you going for? Uh, well, I know Aberdeen got a good result uh, in midweek there, but let's be serious here. They're playing against Hamilton, who are they're shelling goals left, right and centre. So I'm not going to take anything out of that game. The thing, a, a wee bit I would take out, they lost two goals at home to Hamilton. You know, and if Hamilton can score two goals, I think Celtic will go up there thinking they can do likewise. So I, I'm going to go for a Celtic one as well. Uh, I, I'm going to go for 1-0. One 1-0 nil. One nil Celtic. one nothing, Char Charlie. I'm going to go 1-1. One one. I think it'll be a tough, one tough one. game. And I think one one. Yeah, we've been on a we've been on a a, a good run. I thought I thought Rangers would get the win last night. I thought AC Milan would get the win, Tam. So I feel as if I'm really coming in to a, a good rich vein of forum. Now because your iPad clearly didn't like what you were saying, do you <laughs> want to reassess things before you give us before you give us your prediction? <laughs> <laughs> no, sorry about that. My iPad fell off my table. Um, I'm going to go for it. Uh, I think Celtic will go up and get a narrow win. I think they win 2 1. Yeah, that's what I said as well. Sorry about that's that. what I said as well, Tom. Oh, yeah. uh, just out of curiosity, Ruffy, I know Charlie was saying there that it would be great, and I, and I know we're in for a what I think the Chief Medical Officer, Jason Leach, mentioned it could be a digital Christmas where we're not all going to be able to get back together with our families. But, um, uh, boy, uh, uh, it's going to be strange, Ruffy, when we all get back together in the studio. I don't think we'll know how to deal with each other because of what we've been under over the last six or seven months. Yeah, I think the, the technical side of it will be a, a, a lot better. I think it'll be more relaxing, you know, tuning in and you know, falling out and coming back in and having to remember all the numbers and all that stuff that goes along with it. No, so it'll be, be better, be better. Uh, but if that's yeah. the case, then we'll just have to do a Zoom night out. I mean, I know some people have done that, but we'll have to have a bash at it anyway. Uh, it looks yeah, the way ahead. absolutely. I agree with you, Rafi. And of old course, old when we all are, <laughs> yeah, well, when we are allowed out and we all are allowed back together, we'll probably reconvene uh, in Charlie's 780th 
hotel bedroom across the country. Um, so, so, just in case. It's a fancy room, by the way, for Dundee. Must I know. Oh, oh, just about, places up there, Charles. I was just about to say, hey, Tom, they, yeah, they clearly know everybody who's there. messaging here. They all think Charlie's got a 19-room mansion because he's in a different room that looks immaculate every every week. <laughs> I've been well looked after by the club, so it's um, it's good. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, there you go. He's a wee bit more Bobby's reserved and professional today. That's it. I've been well looked after by the club. Uh, yes, absolutely. Anyway, thanks to all the countless uh, messages we're getting um, from lots of uh, uh, people talking about the performances last night. So we've given a prediction on that. Um, listen, the big worry, um, I have to say, is, uh, of course, St Mirren. Um, they were supposed to have a press conference. There's a bit of a delay on whether their match is going to go ahead against Hamilton because of the uh, subsequent COVID positive tests uh, that have emerged from there as well. It's it's getting to be a worry, Ruffy, on this with uh, St Mirren. And, and it's not that they're doing anything wrong. It's basically, you know, you've got people who've been infected and then a couple of days later, you'll get another few who are infected because they've all been in the vicinity of of the uh, the previous players. Yeah, but the other thing as well, Peter, the, when they finish training, they're out of the club's hands. You know, you're relying on everybody going away and going by the rules. But unfortunately, for whatever, I'm not saying they're going deliberately going out of the, the rules or anything like that, but you, you don't know when you're going to catch this thing, you know, and that that's why it's... Uh, it must be a serious worry for the clubs. I think the more serious one, when they correct me for wrong, just before we come on air, I, I read that Kilmarnock are going to be investigated. Well, Did I, you pick that, that, was that was exactly yeah. what I was just about to go on to see. It's the, the show's got a link, Ruffy, um, but I, I, oh, yeah. I will get to that point. Uh, but it brings me nicely. It's well, called absolutely. the link. It's, it's, it's just a, it, no, it's the just link is Peter Martin's the boss, just, and you've just killed yeah. the script. <laughs> No, no, it's just, it's just uh, unbelievable. It just years exactly. of experience, you know. Yeah, absolutely. Ruffy, listen, we're two peas in a pod, to be honest with you. Um, no, the point I was going to make was, and it, and it goes exactly to the heart of what you're talking about, is there are clubs up and down the country who are following the code of conduct. Um, the investigation which uh, the SPFL will look into Kilmarnock is on the basis that uh, to see if they have all been following the protocol. Um, but we'll talk about that in a second because I think the, the point I was making with St Mirren is something that Stephen Robinson, the Motherwell boss, was talking about. You know, this is not through any great fault of St Mirren there are clubs up and down the country, Stephen Robinson pointed out, who are going to fall foul of this. We've had a, a positive case ourselves on Tuesday um, and got that confirmed. I got confirmed yesterday morning. So that player is self-isolating. So, you know, uh, we're certainly not immune to it. And St Mirren and Kilmarnock are not the only clubs that are having it. Everyone's having it. If you look throughout the world, world football, is it Standard Liège, a player is missing last night. You know, Scotland, a player is missing from... It's going to be something that we're just all going to have to cope with. So, as I say, we've had a positive. All the, the rest of the staff and players tested negative. We're going to retest. Well, we've retested already this morning just as a, as a precautionary measure. So, again, I think that highlights the protocols of the Scottish football. We are catching it. We are trying to isolate the... the the, the people that have it and stay in control of it because we're not going to get rid of it. Scottish football is not going to get rid of it. World of football is not going to get rid of it. Well, the point that Stephen Robinson is making is on, on the basis that everybody is following the protocol. Um, the reason why Kilmarnock have uh, faced a charge from the SPFL is involving a game against Motherwell. Six of their players um, were obviously... Um, tested for COVID on that occasion. Um, and the allegation here is that they breached the po protocol, Ruffy. Yeah. Uh, is it right that Motherwell po uh, pulled Morris Ross out of that interview? <laughs> Was he supposed to be doing that? No. Oh, you'll be, no. you'll be in trouble. No, Motherwell yeah. will start testing positive. He's been kidding everybody. Yeah, well, I was got, well, not only not only kidding them, he's giving his assessment of, I didn't know Morris studied the last 20 years of Celtic teams so vigorously, but nevertheless, mm -hmm. um, on, the Mor on the Morris issue, Morris, I think, is perfectly entitled to his opinion because he comes on as a pundit, Rob. Does it under the umbrella yes, of Motherwell? I think is possibly the question that possibly yeah, left him in a wee bit is, of trouble. That, that it, it is the main. It is the main thing that a player from another club is commenting another 
but a lot of people would agree with most of the stuff he said, just not that uh, the connection that he had. But no, it's a difficult one for all the clubs. Uh, and as the motherboard manager said there, it might be them and it might be Samirn just now, but it could be somebody else two or three weeks down the road. So I think we've all got a fair play here, you know, and be very considerate uh, for whatever club it's, it's getting it just now. And back to the original point, Tam, that you could maybe answer since Ruffy was so determined to get his Morris Ross gag in. Um, uh, this, could be san- this, this could be sanctions or indeed a fine to Kilmarnock or forfeiting the, the three points for the game against Motherwell if they are found guilty of the allegations of breaching protocol. Yeah, it's a, listen, it's a serious issue. I mean, I've seen Motherwell's Twitter, uh, sorry, Kilmarnock's Twitter saying they'll fight it vigorously, um, anything the, the SPFL come up with, but the SPFL must have something. They must know something. They must have concrete evidence that Kilmarnock have done something wrong and they've not went with the protocols or else they wouldn't be investigating them. So... Listen, I'll see how it all unfolds. I think if the, you know, if the, I think Celtic and Aberdeen get fined eight grand or something like that. So I think it might be a similar, similar fine to them, maybe find them money. But I don't see them de- deducting points. I think if you start deducting points, you open up a different can of worms altogether. And as Ruffy said, it might be an Aberdeen, a Celtic, a Rangers, a Hibs down the line, and uh, you've got to go and forfeit. They may forfeit points as well. So I don't think the points should be up for. Forfeit, and I think it should be maybe just a slap in the wrist or whatever, or a, or a small thing. Okay, um, Motherwell against Ross County. I'm going to go to Fir Park uh, tomorrow to watch that game. Tom, I haven't seen Motherwell in a in a wee while. I'm I'm looking forward to it. Um, just as Ruffy's checking, that uh, is the gen okay, Ruffy? Do you need to put more in it? Uh, uh, before no, I'm ask? actually right. I'm writing down the predictions so I can add a wee bit of excitement to five yeah. uh, ten to five tomorrow night. Okay, Motherwell against Ross County. How do you, how do you see that going, Tom? Uh, I think Motherwell beat them. I was I was obviously seeing Ross County last week. wasn't really impressed with them. Hibs should have beat them. Um, to be honest, they missed a load of chances. I think Motherwell beat them. I'll go for Motherwell two, Ross County one. Okay, Motherwell to beat Ross County. I think it could be tighter. Charlie, I'm going to go for a draw one one. What about you? Yeah, I'll go 1-1 as well. I think it's a tough away game to go to. Um, I'll go 1-1. Yeah. Um, Charlie, just is on this... the basis of... Are you just going to interrupt everything no, all no, through no, the whole programme today? That, is, this, is this game at Motherwell? <laughs> yes. That's OK. Um, OK. I'm going to say uh, just because I... 3-1. 3-1 the, the, Motherwell. Because I said it. That... Because I said this is a tough away game. This is a tough away yeah. game for Ross County then. I'm going to go three, for Ross one. County to get a draw there. Yeah, a draw. A draw for Ross County. Um, and of course, had you written down in your notes, you would have known Motherwell were at home, Ruffy. So clearly no, that just is Charlie just a ruse by you. Yeah, no, absolutely. Um, me so 1-1 one, one for uh, Motherwell, Ross County. Um, I think we could all just, why don't we all just meet in the car park and start leathering each other? Um, uh, the other thing I want to know is, John Ayer says Motherwell to win one nothing. Brian Haig says 2-1 Motherwell. Um so that's yep. all about the predictions there. Um, now, the one other thing I was going to say to you, uh, just off the back of uh, that, Kilmarnock against Hibs. Um, we're talking about the uh, COVID cases there. So Kilmarnock have to put that to one side and come up against your uh, high bees. Uh, are you making the trip to Rugby Park or are you doing it from Easter Road, Tam? <laughs> I'm doing it from East Coast, Easter Road, unfortunately, oh again my. tomorrow. Oh, my I know. God. The money's gone, Peter. He's dragged up. No, honestly, I'm t- <laughs> Charlie, <laughs> you'll never I'm know the how... Re- come on. <laughs> honestly, the first couple of weeks, if Hibs draw Real Madrid in anything, let's fly them all out there. But now, suddenly, the budget, as Charlie said, has been cut. There's not even tea at half time. How do you see it going, Tom? Uh, I think it's a difficult game for Hibs. I think it's always hard to go down there uh, at Rugby Park and play on their, their AstroTurf pitch. I think the uh, command have been very, very strong down there. Hibs are very solid defensively. Um, so I, I, I'm going to go for Hibs 1-0. Hibs to win one nothing, And this is Kelly who have won four of the last five games as well. Uh, and Alec Dyer has just mentioned um, in the uh, pre-match press conference that he thinks they can more than hold their own against Hibernian. We feel that we can, we can hold our own, you know, and that's what we want to do this weekend. You know, we give it, all, give it our best shot, work hard like we do every week, and 
and hopefully the result will take care of itself. I'm going to go 1-1, one, one. Charlie Adam. What do you think? I'm going to go 2-2. Two, two. I think it'll be a good game. Both teams, you know, like I say, Kamanik have, have, have done well in the last few games. and 2-2 two, two will be a, a tough game. Tough game in the AstroTurf, but I'll go for another draw. Yeah. Charlie, do you like playing in the AstroTurf? I know uh, wouldn't, you wouldn't have encountered that too many times down south. Listen, it's, um, I'm not going to moan about it. We've been to a couple, you know, we played at Montrose, which wasn't a great one, but, you know, we, we train at most Fridays, um, you know, if we are, if we, if we, let's like say, but, no, I don't mind it. Well, well, you've got to adapt to it. There's no excuse, I don't think, and, and that is where we are in Scottish football at the moment. We have to play in Astro, and, you know, as players, you've got to adapt to it. Um, so, no, there's, there's no excuses. Yeah, that's what I like about you, Charlie. No excuses. Ruffy? Yeah, I think Hibs have got a good record down there. Um, I'm going to go for Hibs to win 2-1. OK. Uh, don't forget, if you are posting things about your uh, team, then by all means, give us your predictions on it, uh, and we will read them out. Alien Feek says Hibs to win this one. Uh, don't forget, every now and then, if you do post uh, stuff that we do mention your name on the programme, it doesn't then give you the right to actually post a lot of um, nonsense. Um, Alec Kelly, try and keep things within the parameters of decency on our Facebook page. Um, that's all I would say to you. Um, uh, we try and read out as many of the posts as we possibly can uh, all talking about their team and all talking about individual Alex players. very staunch Some, well not all Atlas and I don't care about people being staunch they can be staunch Celtic fans and staunch Rangers fans or whatever um, staunch Premier League fans of any club as long as they're staunch and decent then we're all on the same page. It's as simple as that. Uh, so <clears throat> apart from that, Kelly21 says Jazz Sweeney. Thanks for that. Um, and Tam Shade says Doom and Gloom. Charlie Adams says every game is a draw. Well, I have to defend Charlie. He doesn't always say they're going to be a draw. There are times when he gives you... I did say Rangers would win 2 nil last night. Well, I was going to say to you, Charlie, I was just going to compliment you on that. Not only did you nail the prediction, but you nailed the correct score as well, Charlie. <laughs> yeah, listen, that's what I'm here for. We're just moments yeah, of magic. Uh, <laughs> yeah. And the, and the Celtic Rangers game, you got the correct score there as well. Yeah, absolutely. So there you are. So a little bit of sucking up there to Charlie just to make him yeah. feel welcome and part of the team. Um, now the uh, Ruffy will be copying you. He's actually predicted yeah. Rangers to win the next ten games, but we'll find that out every week. <laughs> <laughs> I I did predict every Celtic game till the old firm, and then I think that Aberdeen will get a point at the weekend. So there we go. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely, Charlie. Don't bite, son. Don't bite. It's fine. He's just <laughs> trying to. He's trying to. He's trying to reel you in and see if he can get it. Uh, anyway, apart from anything else, St Johnston against Dundee United. Uh, St Johnston ninth, one win in the last five. Although I have seen little shoots of recovery uh, from them. Tam, do you share that view? Hey, I'm a little bit worried about Dundee United at the minute. Um, I just don't think they're. There's enough of a threat at the other end at the you know scoring goals. I think St Johnston are playing with confidence at the minute. You know they've scored twelve goals in the last two games. Stevie May's rejuvenated, so I think St Johnston will beat them. I think I'm going to go for St Johnston two one. Oh, Dundee United um, sixth in the table, Charlie, uh, and again a similar kind of a pattern to them. One win in the last five. Um, how do you see it, Chas? Yeah, Tayside Derby and both teams, you know, I, I, I fancy St. Johnson here. I think St. Johnson can get a win at home against Dundee United. Um, it's a, you know, St. Johnson scored a few goals recently and, you know, United are no, you know, no getting enough service to Shanklin and that's a worry. You know, he's their main man and, um, you know, it'll be interesting to see, but I think St. Johnson can nick this one. 1-0. One yeah, yeah. Ruffy? <clears throat> well, just to prove that I don't do spread betting, uh, I was going to go 2-1. Uh, for St Johnson, so I'm going to stick you're with two one because, because I'm a, I really no no I'm going to stick with two one because I think I think if I change this one I could lose ground, so I'm going to keep with two one, St Johnson. Yeah, 
two one to St Johnston. Okay, um, I, I don't know about this one. This is such a tough one to call, um, but I'm I'm going to go St Johnston to win it one nil. There you are. It's one of those erratic. Oh Please yeah, I know. I know exactly where you go. Yeah, it's, a, it's an erratic one. Um, of course, the other thing about it, I've predicted one nothing, and Mickey Mellon's come out and says, well, uh, you know, he's looking at his team, he's looking at the performances, and he reckons he's got the best goalkeeper in the country. And he wants to get better and better, the same with other players. But, uh, no, we're, we're really pleased to have him here, and I believe, and this is my opinion, and uh, every other manager will argue with that, and the title to that, I think he's one of the best in the country comfortably. Yeah, oh, Seagrist. He was Good excellent goalie. against Aberdeen last week. Yeah, on, 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 on the basis no. of the last three or four games he's played, he's been top for him. He's been winning points for the club. Uh, I don't know about the, best, the best in the country. Maybe the best, maybe the best in the country over he's the last the, two or three weeks. He's not the, he's a, he's not the, he's not the best in the country. No. He's, just a, no, he's, he's, he's a mass, he's a, he's a Hibs goalie. Let's, he's a let's be, there's no point in just Marciano's burned him. No. Mar- Marciano is Marciano or not? <laughs> Unbelievable Charlie, Charlie I know you're going to say the best in the country for me is Alan McGregor Absolutely, without doubt there's nobody close to him um, and every goal, every manager will say that goal is the best but you know, Alan McGregor is, is the best goalkeeper in Scottish football at the moment and, and that's it so can we move on to the next Is he the best goalkeeper outside the Celtic Rangers? <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Is he, is he the best goal? No. <laughs> no, Not for me, I'd have no, no, I'm listening to the way this show is going today, and, and clearly, I, I kid you not, if, if, if I can move into each box, I'd just keep belting each of you with a baseball bat. I love Charlie's line there. Charlie, uh, look, he's the best goalkeeper. Let's move on to the next question. And of course, you, Tom, losing patience with Bonzo because Ruffy tries to give you 25 seconds of nonsense till he eventually gets to an opinion, and you're battering him saying, is he the best goalkeeper? Is he the best goalkeeper? Um, you have to really control Joel him into it, Tom, before he tells you the answer. But I agree with uh, Charlie on this one. It's Alan McGregor. Who's the second best goalkeeper in the Scottish Premiership? I don't know. It's open to debate. Some people will obviously throw a name at us. Um, but it certainly ain't Barkas. That's uh, for certain. Um, OK, and he costs five million. So uh, there's something to debate on this one. Um, St Mirren against Hamilton. I have my doubts this game's going to go ahead. I think this could be a late call-off tonight, Tom. Yeah, I think St Myrna have been you know, riddled with coronavirus. Um, you know, there have so many players and coaches you know, come down with it, which is really, really unfortunate. So I, I, I probably tend to agree with you. I think if they're struggling to field a team again, um, then I think the game will be postponed. So I will put down uh, postponed as my prediction. Um <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, listen. I'll, 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 oh, good. I'll hold let's hope that. the game. Let's hope the game goes ahead. Yeah, I'm, I, on the on the basis of the way it's going at the moment, I, I, I'm going to go St Mirren nil, Hamilton one, Charlie. Yeah, I fancy a draw here again. I'm going to go for one one. One one, Ruffy. Yeah, I can't split the two teams either. Uh, I'm going to go one one as well. I'll go 3-2 yeah, okay. if it goes ahead. Okay, thanks for that, Tom. We got there in the end. Uh, here's how the fixtures look over the weekend. If you are uh, going to watch a game um, by whatever means, then, uh, of course, fingers crossed, you are nicely uh, tucked up in your house uh, following all the rules as this COVID second wave uh, seems to be taking full effect on many regions in Scotland and across the UK. It's Kilmarnock against Hibs, Motherwell, Ross County, St Mirren, Hamilton, and St Johnson against Dundee United on the Saturday. And then the early kickoff is Aberdeen against Celtic before Rangers take on Livingston later on in the afternoon. So, uh, some really good games. Uh, interesting uh, the way the whole thing is panning out. Um, the last thing we want is a backlog of games for clubs to try and catch up with. One thing's for certain, Charlie, there will be no room for Celtic and Rangers to catch up. Um, if there were games suddenly uh, not being played. I think their their fixtures, especially with the Europa League, are fairly tight all the way to the new year. Yeah, and that's why, like you say, I think they could both teams could lose some of their best players 
um, through this coronavirus in the next few weeks. And um, you know, I just think that it's uh, it is a worry for every club, um, especially the old firm teams, because they don't have much room. But they'll have to just get on with it and play games. And you know, they might be under strength, and but they've got squads that are good enough to bring players in. Yeah, uh, Niall Kane says, going for a postponed prediction, but if it goes ahead, then uh, one nothing is his prediction to St Mirren. Uh, Doogie Little, thanks for this. Uh, Doogie, this is an interesting one. Um, I'm not sure, I'm not actually sure. I'm going to go and check and see if we'd be allowed to go and see it. Peter on Sunday says, there's an early screening of the Three Kings documentary on in the cinema. Um, I, I'm certainly looking forward to that, Rafi. I'd love to see the Three Kings documentary. I think it's going to be fantastic. Yeah, three absolute legends. Uh, done so much in the game. Uh, and every one of them, you know, bounced off each other. I think the three of them were very, very good pals. You know, they used to keep in contact quite a lot. And if you ask every modern day manager, they would be the three managers that they would try to build their career upon because they did so well with all the clubs they were at. Yeah, uh, can I just mention that Ian Noble has said there, and I forgot all about him, and, and my apologies to Ian, who I know he's a big Aberdeen fan. Uh, Joe Lewis is, is a well-paid goalie. He's bound to be decent. He could be uh, a man laying a claim for the second-best goalkeeper in in the league time. I forgot about Joe Lewis. He's, he's decent. Yeah, Joe Lewis has been excellent for Aberdeen over the years. Very, very solid, very reliable. Um, there's, a, there's a few of them. As he said, you know, Segrist, you know, done the fans would maybe put him forward. He's been good. Marciano certainly been very, very solid for Hibs. So no, there is there's, there's quite a few um, who who would state claim, but I think uh, I think I don't think there's any doubt that Alan McGregor is the best goalkeeper in the country. Yeah, just out of curiosity, Tam and Colin Moyes has uh, posted something which I think is very pertinent. He says, uh, Tam, what's your travel plans for next Saturday? Because Charlie and I are aware that the Hibs TV budget seems to have been savagely cut <coughs> if you're forced to go to Easter Road. Um, of course, the PLZ team will be doing a live from Hamden ahead of the big game and will be doing post-match reaction, Tam. I just thought I'd mention that to you in p passing. What's, what's happening with you? Will you be going to Hamden? I don't, I'm not sure yet. I've not um, firmed the plans up yet, but hopefully we're going to Hamden. <laughs> yeah, yeah I, will you, I will work for PLZ if I get a fee. <laughs> well, there you are. So, <laughs> to, what is that to pay for the TV cruise bus back to Edinburgh? Uh, anyway, yes. um, apart from anything else, uh, yeah, it'll be a good one. I'm really looking forward to it. Um, okay, Charlie. Um, Best goal you've seen uh, when you were maybe playing or you've witnessed it, you've been actually in the ground and watched it? Peter, you put me on the spot. Um, yeah, I only gave I'm you an clueless. hour. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm clueless. <laughs> I'll, I'll probably have to... I'll, yeah. I'll, 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 say my, I'll say my goal. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Don't mind a, a wee bit of blow, blowing your own trumpet <laughs> because, it's Charlie, so arrogant. if I'm... <laughs> well, no, it's not arrogance, it's brilliance because it was an excellent, it was a fantastic goal and it was up there yeah, and very similar to Kim well. Ar oh, for God's sake, man. It's a back slapping day out we've got here, Ruffy. <laughs> what are you going to say? Ruffy, are you going to say a, a kick out for Partick Thistle in the League Cup final? <laughs> no, no, I'm going, to pick a, I'm going to pick a game. I'm going to pick a game that I was actually involved in. Uh, 1978 World Cup uh, game. Scotland versus Holland, uh, Archie Gemmell. Oh, I mean, there you are. That's a fantastic goal. That's a great goal, Ruffy. Yep, I'm, I'm going to give you that one. Well done, because you were there. You were on the. Not the one the you time. threw in. <laughs> Not the one he threw in. This is this is the, this is the one, by the way. And I don't know about you, Charlie. If this happened to you before you before you lobbed Courtois, um, Ruffy mentioned there that Asa Hartford <clears throat> was shouting to Archie Gemmell in the game, "Pass it." Pass it, and Archie Gemmell, meanwhile, is going round every Dutch player before chipping it over Jan Youngblood. What was the worst goal you ever let in, Ruffy? Uh, Strenra. I was down at Strenra, and there was a through ball. Centre forward was coming for it. I ran out of the edge of the 18 yard box, had a swipe at it, missed it completely, and the ball trickled <laughs> towards the goal. And I stupidly tried to get it back, and I ended up in the net. I get caught in the net. I had to get people to come on and cut me out the net. <laughs> well, everybody was still. <laughs> Fantastic. 
And of course, a, a, a stampede of people mentioning Andy Ritchie's goal against you, Ruffy. Yes. Uh, Morton on a rock solid pitch when Andy managed to just bend it over the wall at the near post. Ruffy's wearing his tracky bottoms. And Ruffy, uh, actually, if you look at it on YouTube, Ruffy does the classic thing that a goalkeeper does to try and deflect away from him being at the, the main fault and losing the goal. No, he does this, Tam. As well as the goalkeeper for standard Liège, you know, talking about having a wee bit of cramp, Ruffy does this. The ball bends into the near post, into the back net, and Ruffy goes... I mean, honestly, as if, as, if it was some, as if it was somebody else's fault. Nothing to do with the genius of Andy Ritchie or Morton. Yeah, yeah. Hey, I'll tell you, yeah but it was funny. I'll tell you. It was funny. Sorry, Charlie was talking about that, shooting for the halfway line. As I said to you before, when you used to play Morton down there, when they took the centre, uh, Andy would have a shot. You know, it was just regular. And I used to shout, I used to stand on the line. There was no way I was off that line. I was on the line and I, I used to shout up to him, not today, Andy. <laughs> uh, yeah, you, you had to be there. Um, be anyway, there. apart from anything else, <laughs> I thought it was going to be better than that. <laughs> yeah, I thought yeah. so did I. Uh, anyway, listen, it's a very special day, Charlie. You wouldn't be aware of this, Charlie, but this is a very special day. It's a special day because Ruffy and I know that uh, today is the 80th birthday of the greatest Charlie. ever footballer. Friday the 23rd of October marks the 80th birthday of Pele, one of football's greatest. Let's have a look at some of the stats. Edson Orantes do Nascimento made his debut for Santos age just 15. He played there for 18 years, scoring 643 goals, winning six league titles and two Copa Libertadores along the way. He was an instant hit for Brazil too, scoring twice in the victorious 1958 World Cup final age 17, a feat he repeated when he notched the opener in the 1970 final in Mexico. He retired from the national team with 92 caps, bagging 77 goals, which is still today's record. In his later years, he moved to the New York Cosmos for two seasons, where he attracted millions to the American game. When his time was up, he ended with 1,283 goals and is still the only player to win three separate World Cups. At the turn of the millennium, he was named World Player of the Century, and few would argue with that. Certainly not me anyway, and of course it was uh, one of the greatest ever nights uh, in my career of interviewing players, and remember, uh, I can remember interviewing the Brazilian legend Ronaldo, but sitting next to Pele, who actually revealed to me uh, that while he was at Santos, he had the chance to leave Santos and join a very famous European club. Some people look at Pele playing for, what, 18 seasons at Santos, would you like to have played in Europe? I, I was, I was, you know, many times invited to play, but uh, I was, I was okay in Santos. You know, Santos was a good team that time. Then I, uh, I say no. I almost, you know, got the the the, 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 the sign for Real Madrid. I almost was close, then, but then I decided don't live from Brazil. Then I say, okay, I'm going to think. Then one month late, I went to, to Cosmos. Amazing, Charlie. He actually could have left Santos yeah, early in his... Uh, yeah, he actually could have left um, Santos early in his career, Charlie, but the Brazilian national government stopped him from moving. They viewed him as a national treasure. Yeah, he's... You know, like you say, you could say that. Uh, you've seen him, you've interviewed him. Probably the one of the, the one of the greatest players ever, the greatest of football pitches. But when you got somebody like that in your country back in that day, you know everything's possible to to not allow it to happen. And can you imagine him playing for Real Madrid in that white strip <coughs> in the Bernabeu? Be phenomenal. But no, what a player he was, and his goal scoring record was phenomenal, wasn't it? Yeah, absolutely amazing. Uh, it doesn't get any better than that, Ruffy. Oh, I mean, right at the beginning of that CV was good enough for me. 17 years of age, World Cup final, scoring two goals. <laughs> does it get any better than that? Of course it does, because <clears throat> that's the kind of player he was. Absolutely brilliant. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and of course, Tam, uh, being the uh, one thing that struck me about him the whole night was when I was chatting to him, humility beyond his years for everything that he achieved he was tremendously humble about it all and gracious about so many of the other great players that he played with for brazil and other players that he'd come up against i just thought he was superb and he did remind me he says listen 
you know, let's get the facts right here. It was 1,283 goals I scored. Yeah, it was good. Listen, his goal scoring record was phenomenal. <laughs> uh, it, was great to see, it was great to see someone up on that stage uh, with a bit of humility and no ego, uh, to be honest. But uh, no, his, his goal scoring record was, was sensational. Yeah, and uh, I always like to read out Stevie. Stevie, uh, whose handle is Stevie Tops at all, um, says, top player, Pelly, but Maradona was a much better all-round player. And uh, Stevie, I hope you were actually born in Scotland because you'll understand this next catchphrase, which is, Stevie, you are havering. You are talking a lot of nonsense. Don't be silly. Pelly was the all-round player, left, right foot, and header as well. There is no better. Um, but of course, I'm sure there are people who are going to absolutely cane me for that. Anyway, uh, just before we go, what a chance to win these prizes. You could win all these fantastic prizes by entering our competition. If you like what you see, you can share it with your friends and you can follow us for all the latest breaking football news. Join the football family at PLZ Soccer on Facebook and you could win all these fantastic prizes. That's a nice wee Christmas present, isn't it, Ruffy? You get an iPad, you get Cruyff, Ibrahimovic. I think I'm needing a new one after Ronaldo. the day. Well, I was just about to <laughs> yeah. say to you. Uh, yeah, you do need a new iPad. And, and of course, Kelly, Maradona and Cruyff t-shirts as well. All in that whole fantastic bag of prizes. Yeah, well, absolutely wonderful. Uh, and let's, I mean, I'm not saying let's an older person will get it yet. It's a young person and a big family that they all can share it. It'd be fantastic at Christmas time. Yes, Ruffy uh, picking the winner. Paul, well, I was just about to say, chat, Tom, I'm glad you mentioned that. Apologies to all the older people who thought they were <laughs> no. in with a chance of winning that. Ruffy wants to actually put it to a select few people who can win it, not older at least people, five kids. So. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> well, looks as if it <laughs> looks as if, looks as if my family's <laughs> back in with a yeah. shout then. <laughs> yes. Let's hope Pelly's not listening. Yeah, absolutely. Um, anyway, apart from anything else, uh, good luck with the competition. Like, share and follow us uh, on our Facebook page and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Uh, Charlie, um, how's the uh, how's the, the, the week been for the Dundee players? Do you sense, you know, you get the bit between the teeth? First game's a tough one to start with, but now in the Championship, you're up against Morton. Yeah, listen, we, we need to bounce back from the week, from last week's result. Um, few do disappointing. Um, the lads have looked good this week. Um, you know, a couple of, you know, a little bit down in the dumps Monday, Tuesday, but come Wednesday, it's ready to go and, you know, we've prepared today and we'll hopefully get three points tomorrow. It's going to be a tough game. Um, they look like a little bit What's of a stroke of old. <clears throat> Well, I can't exactly predict that because that's um, betting and um, we're not allowed to do that, but um, it's going to be a tough game and you know, we'll look forward to it. Yeah, absolutely. Well done, Charlie. Too smart for you, McManus, to get him fooled into something like that, let me tell you. That's why I signed him. Charlie, they are just uh, cultured in the midfield for us. Uh, and, of course, because he's a player, he'll not get caught up in that. But I'm going for hearts to beat our broth 3-0 tonight. Come on, the Jambos. There you are. Second, <laughs> second win in the week. Yeah, yeah I'm not waiting to get my strip out of the cupboard. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, big apologies to everyone. Don't forget that uh, uh, on Monday's show, Ruffy will interrupt Alison McConnell on a regular basis <laughs> and Tam as well. Um, you've been in one of those moods today, <laughs> Ruffy, haven't you? You've just been determined yeah. to jump all over Adam and McManus. No, I think that's, that's good. We're all getting to know each other. We all get to know where we, where we can go, how far we can go. We obviously know Charlie doesn't get a win tomorrow. He'll be probably on some caravan somewhere in Brody Ferry, uh, rather than a luxury hotel. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't do a pop them out, I think it beat them on Yeah. To be to be perfectly honest with you, the, the way things are going, if Charlie's team doesn't get a win in the next three matches, he'll be on this show Monday, Wednesday, and Fridays as well. To be perfectly honest, I was honest actually going to text you that asking if I can get on another one of them. 
<laughs> We'd love to have you. Uh, listen, to everyone out there, thank you for offering your opinion. We do value it and we do uh, appreciate the fact you love your football team and you've got your own opinion on it. And to all the decent people who joined the football family, thank you. Tam, have a great weekend. Charlie, have a winning weekend. Ruffy, have a wee drink of that gin, son, and enjoy your weekend as well. Thanks for watching, everyone. Expect the best used car deals guaranteed. Visit arnoldclark.com.